are you doing? This is my chair. I've been sitting here for three days. And I've been sitting here for three years and 47 days. <laughs> I haven't said anything because you're new and we hadn't gotten a chance to know each other. Now I realize I can take you. <laughs> Gentlemen, please, there is a seat on either side of me. David, why don't you come and sit over here? Yes, Dave, why don't you? <laughs> This isn't over with, Scarecrow. <laughs> All right, children, let's go. Put away your crayons. Let's hear some stories. Come on, Nora. Uh, Suji and I have our day of shopping with Tori Spelling Piece. Sounds good. Not really. She spent the entire day at a 99 cent store walking around with a can of hairspray asking, how much is this? <laughs> Jake, what have you got? Well, we paid for that interview with Marilyn Monroe's former housekeeper about what really happened the night Marilyn died, but uh, she keeps slipping in and out of a coma, and I can't be there 24 hours a day. Now, it sounds like you could use some help. Bradley? What hospital? Hollywood General. Ooh, no, no, no way. Uh, the uh, restraining order is still hanging over my head from Liz's last visit. <laughs> like a real doctor wouldn't have climbed in bed with her and had his picture taken for a Christmas card. Well, as a tabloid journalist, my first question is, and I believe I learned this from you, Jake. What's in it for me? The story is too time consuming for one person. You take turns at the hospital, you share the byline. All right, sounds fair. Fine with me. Perfectly equitable. I think it's wrong. I think everything about this stupid meeting is wrong. <laughs> Can I have his chair? <laughs> You'll never believe what happened to me in the elevator just now. There was this incredible woman, incredible smile, incredible legs, and her eyes, they, they were... Incredible? No, brown. Ah. <laughs> and, and we were standing there, you know, checking each other out, and right. she stops the elevator in between floors when we were all alone, and without even saying a word, we... What? Oh, God. <laughs> with a total stranger without even talking? Wow, with a total stranger without even talking. <laughs> Jake, even dogs sniff each other first. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, at my old job, I sat across from a guy who used his own earwax as chapstick. <laughs> You're making me miss him. <laughs> your American elevator and finally I managed to get off. <laughs> this is great. Why didn't you call and tell me you were coming? Oh, well, you know us Germans. Happy go lucky. <laughs> oh, hello. Nice to see you again. You two know each other? Oh, uh, yeah. We rode up in the elevator together. Oh. Go. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, excuse me. He's very nice, but his cologne burns my tongue. <laughs> 
And that concludes the thank you, ma'am, portion of the evening. <coughs> um. Bradley, this is Lisa, Lisa <clears throat> Bradley. We went to college together. Lisa's from Munich. Oh. You know, I've often felt that everyone has two hometowns, really. Their own and Munich. <laughs> I'm sorry? It's German. Yeah, I know, but you asked me where you could find a man's bathhouse. Yeah, I know I did, because I was actually, you know, testing you to see if you spoke the Hamburglerian or the Frankfurterian dialect. Sorry to make you look foolish. Excuse me. Munich. Crappy town, crappy people. I know you're poor, but always vacation domestic. <laughs> So, do you have time for lunch? Yeah, uh, I gotta wrap up a few things. Grab us a table, I'll meet you down there. Okay. Okay. Tell me everything about her. Jakey, you're wasting your time. Lisa's all wrong for you. What are you talking about? She's perfect for me. I didn't even have to tell her what to do with her free hand. <laughs> what, point and laugh? <laughs> Look, Jake, I'm trying to do you a favor here. I mean, Lisa's... Liesel's fun, you know, but, uh, but the men who get involved with her end up, well... What? Injured, insane, or in jail. All right, well, at least tell me her last name. Come on, I'll pay you. Where's my wallet? I knew I had it when I came into work. Hmm, maybe the German girl took it. You should be an pickpocket, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So you didn't happen to see a wallet in there, did you? No, but I found a couple of shoulder pads. Look at me. I'm Camilla. You go to work. <laughs> you go to work. What about that guy who was so crazy about me that he kept hanging out in our dorm room? He was older. Dean something. His name was Ted. He was the dean. <laughs> That's how you and I graduated with honors, remember? <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta get back. I'm gonna get the waitress and get the check. Okay, I wanna make this quick before Nora gets back. Oh, that would be nice, but it's much too crowded in here. <laughs> and our children and old people. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. I had my wallet when I was on the elevator with you this morning. And now I don't. What do you make of that? What are you saying? I'm saying I looked for it everywhere, and I'm wondering if you know anything about it. You are accusing me of stealing your wallet? I didn't say that. Maybe it flew out of my pocket and landed someplace. Like? Like your purse. I don't have to listen to this. I'm leaving. No, no, no. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What, what, what are you doing? I didn't want to take it. I had to. For my mother. She is in Munich. She's very ill and she needs a new kidney. I, I was going to pay you back and put the money in a nice leather wallet. Not like this Velcro sofa crap. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. If there is anything I can do to make it up to you. Well, I wouldn't mind having my credit cards back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or that personal check I keep tucked in here. <laughs> and I have absolutely no idea what you'd want with my fishing license. I only wanted that to remind me of you. The one that got away. <laughs> So. So. So you want to have dinner with me tonight? <laughs> you know what? If, if you could just snap out of it, just, just, just wake up, just just long enough to tell me what happened to Marilyn that night. Cause I love you, Quimmer. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Good. Mmm. It was Peter Lawford, wasn't it? Where have you been? You were supposed to relieve me at the hospital at 8. Do you, do you have any 
idea with the intensive care unit sounds like at 3 a.m. when the morphine wears off? There's a lot of screaming, a lot of begging, a couple of Lord take me nows. Nora, I can explain. No, 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 no. Thanks to you, I haven't even been home in 36 hours. I just want to be with people who go to the bathroom instead of the bathroom coming to them. I'm sorry, I was with Liesel. Wait a minute. That's why you flaked on me last night? I know, I know, but it won't happen again. <clears throat> what, what am I here on? Last night at the movies, Liesel felt compelled to tell some huge Polish guy that uh, kielbasa is the poor man's bratwurst. You went to the movies? <clears throat> and she stole my wallet, again. What do you mean, she stole your wallet again? Well, she lifted it in the elevator yesterday, and uh, she's taking it again. And you still asked her out? How'd you meet your ex, Jake, at gunpoint? <laughs> yeah, Jakey. <clears throat> Word on the street is you're having a little female trouble. Huh? Yeah, well, that's an understatement. Well, Chief, we can't help you out. You know, I've kind of been there myself. Really? Yeah, now, she's dangerous, isn't she? She's exciting. She makes you do things you've never done before, huh? Right, mm. right. Yeah, and even though you know that deep down somehow it's wrong, you just can't stay away, can you? Yes, right. mm. yes, and, and all you want is just to spend every minute of every day with her. Wow, uh, <laughs> you're out there, fella. That one, no. <laughs> okay. Injured, insane, or in jail? Two down. One to go. Yeah, well, don't worry about me. I have learned my lesson. It's over. Jake, I had the most wonderful time last night. Liesl, we got to talk. Come here. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> I was just uh, fixing the chair. I think it's uh, <clears throat> got a loose uh, bearing. <laughs> but I think it's okay now, so, uh, just get out of here. Uh, my wallet seems to be missing again. Know anything about it? Are you accusing me of stealing your wallet? Yes, I'm accusing you of stealing it. <laughs> oh, Jake, if I took your wallet, do you think I would be dumb enough to keep it in my purse? Ooh. Okay, now my watch. I did not take your watch. How could you even suggest such a thing? And I don't believe you. Look me in my good eye and tell me you didn't take it. I did not take your watch. And I believe you. <laughs> About you. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. Your car's in my space. Hey, life goes on. <laughs> Where were you? Because you certainly weren't at the hospital. I've been wandering in the desert. Let me guess. You left her in a cave with your diary and told her you were coming back. Actually, she stole my car and left me under the giant thermometer at the Bun Boy Diner on I-15. You know, I've always wanted to eat there. Are their prices reasonable? How should I know, Bradley? She stole my wallet again. Hey, you! Boxcar Willie. Where's your copy? We go to press this afternoon. Oh. Oh, great. Oh. Oh, wow. Look at this. Completely incomprehensible. Covered in schoolboy scribbles and love doodles. Like working with Larry King again. <laughs> Here, Nora, you have to write up the Richard Gere story. Wait a minute, I'm already covering for him at the hospital. Now I gotta do this? I need it by two. All right, I'm getting screwed here, and it's all your fault. I warned you not to go out with Liesel, and did you listen? No. Now, what do you have to say for yourself? She stole my car and left me out in the desert to die. I'm really beginning to question our relationship. <laughs> Liesel? Jake! Jake! Nora! Liesel! Jake! What? Just keep your distance, all right? She's like kryptonite to you. 
Lisa, you've got to stay away from Jake. You, you gotta think about someone else for a change, because you're really messing up my life. Oh, well, not to worry. I'm going home to Munich. Munich? Yeah, would you like to come? He can't do that. Oktoberfest is coming. We can make love all day and poker all night. He doesn't polka. Yes, I do. I'm from Pennsylvania. When are we leaving? Jake! Right now. My flight leaves in an hour. I'm sorry, Nora. People have to have dinner next time, yeah, yeah? Wiedersehen. Did I just agree to move to Germany and polka all night? Yeah. Jake, going down. Water my plants. <laughs> Where's he going now? Germany, with Liesl. Well, go and stop him. Why? He's a grown idiot. <laughs> Look, Nora, there are two reporters I really rely on in this place, you and Jake. Now, if Jake goes, I will miss him, but you will miss him even more because you will have to take up his slack. Well, how's that fair? Because I said so. And because you brought that virus and pumps in here. <laughs> now, either you go save Jake from that linzer tart, or you get started on his next story. A man born without a collarbone who rescues children from holes. <laughs> he lives in Appalachia with his wife and sister. Same person. <laughs> Jake. Jake, knock it off. Ooh. Nora, are you coming to official scooter Riser? Depends. Is that German for good trip? Yeah. <laughs> then no. <laughs> Listen, do you mind? Can I just have a moment with Jake? Oh, yeah, but not much more. We are boarding. You want to play in my embarrassing? <laughs> she calls me your little bear. <laughs> That's because she's already slept in your bed and eaten all your porridge. <laughs> Jake, look, you cannot get on that plane. I have to be with her. No, you don't. I've seen this happen before. A year from now, you'll be broken and penniless, living under some bridge along the Rhine with a, with a monkey that begs for change. That sounds great. Me, Liesl, and a monkey. <laughs> okay, let me put it another way. Harder. Good, once more. Okay. Now I gotta get on a plane. Uh, Liesl? Why aren't you on the plane, hon? Oh, dirty for shopping. Do you like obsession? Not as much as Jake. <laughs> Lisa, the plane is leaving, and Jake's on it. Aww. Oh, well, Munich will be good for Jake. He looked a little stressed, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> so, where do you want to have dinner? I'm famished. This really doesn't bother you, does it? Well, he may be angry for a little while, but, but it is like the time I pulled off your sweater and threw it from the chairlift. You were angry at first, but then you got over it because you know I love you and we're fun together. I got over it because I met that ski instructor. Oh, yeah, all thanks to me. <laughs> now, why don't we let Jake buy us a little drink before dinner? You, you mean he doesn't have his wallet either? <laughs> you know, this is almost worth a trip to Appalachia. <laughs> Listen, Dave, I've been thinking about things. Chair things. And I realize I've been awfully petty. So please, you take this seat. No, no, Harris, it was wrong of me to try to take your chair in the first place, so uh, you sit there. All right. Now you sit, Dave. You sit in your chair. Good 
Good morning. All right, then. Let's get started. Bradley. What in the world? Oh. You know, I'm really getting tired of this. When did you get back? Last night. Oh. So, what's new? Marilyn's maid came out of her coma. Really? No, but you missed her birthday. We celebrated by turning her over. <laughs> no, it didn't sound like much, but we sang while we did it. Oh, I, uh, I almost forgot. Oh, hey, thanks. Lisa flew off to Florence yesterday. Big purse sale on the Ponte Vecchio. Yeah, you must have thought I was pretty crazy. Yes. But, you know, I know why guys fall for Lisa. She's surprising, spontaneous. <laughs> you know. I guess sometimes I wish that I was more like that, able to live in the moment. Really? Yeah. serious, did you? Where's your sense of humor? <laughs> and where's my wallet? 